Let me know when, we, when we're rolling live. We're doing it live. Uh, <laughs> that's what I get to say before the recording goes full. Okay. Are you on TV? It's just one moment. It's got a pair for the Facebook. I'm I'm counting on that one moment, or else everything I say is probably uh, you know come back to haunt me in later years. So just as the agenda says, just for clarity, we're going to open and close. You know, open, do the public hearing, close the public hearing out. Uh, and then we'll move on to our regular workshop. We'll call it to order after. Uh, and then at the, at the end of that, we'll have a, a very quick, I believe, uh, executive session for, for uh, Mr. Rob. Sounds good. So do we have... Uh... So I'm going to start letting people in here now as it's um, loading up on the Facebook. Sounds outstanding. And I'm going to stop sharing. Perfect. Let everybody kind of connect and get their audios in and then I will. Uh, you can tell me, Mr. Chairman, when you want to see the agenda, I'll, I'll put it up at that time. Not a problem. Uh, but I think right now for the purposes of where we are and so that everybody understands so that we have, it looks like we have everyone in. Um, the agenda on today consists of a public hearing first uh, on the uh, chicken uh, ordinance um, following the public hearing. So we'll open it, close the public hearing, uh, and then we'll head into the, uh, uh, the, the standard kind of workshop for council. Uh, that being the case, uh, we are going to open a, uh, a public hearing. Uh, so. Uh, I would ask that uh, we have a, a call to order. The public hearing is on the ordinance that establishes the keeping of backyard chickens for personal use and for the enjoyment and the construction of the associated chicken coop uh, and chicken run necessary for the keeping of backyard chickens. Um, that being the case, I'm not gonna read through the entire thing. I think it's in the agenda, uh, but I would ask that we, uh, we do a, a call to a roll call so we can call this to order, uh, Mr. Manager, and we will take comments from individuals uh, individuals who would like to comment, please state your name, uh, your address. You need to be either a resident or a taxpayer of the borough of Churchill. Uh, and then you'll have up to three minutes to, to speak on, your, on, on this issue, but it is specific to this issue. Uh, this time I would ask for a roll call for, from the borough manager and then we'll move forward. Matt Castiglia. Present. Kevin Collins. Here. Norma Greco. Here. Valerie Renthaler. Here. Adam McDowell. Here. Vice President Diane Long. Here. Mayor Paul Gamrat. Here. And Council President Jay Dorn. I am here. Uh, additionally here with us uh, is our borough manager, assistant manager and the solicitor. And so the gang's all here. Let's get the party started. Uh, again, this is a public hearing. So in this purpose in our virtual space, uh, if you would like to comment, uh, again, if you can raise your hand, if you click on uh, the participants, uh, normally there's the option to raise hand. Uh, if you click on the raise hand, I will call you in the order in which I, in which I see you. It actually kind of automatically puts you in order. Uh, if you are unable to raise the hand or can't find it or have a, have a challenge with it, uh, I will then look to folks who I can visibly see raising their hands, uh, which time I will call on you by whatever screen name that we have in front of us. So excuse me, if you have a screen name that isn't you, uh, I'll apologize up front. Uh, and then once I've done that, if there are additional people who are not visible to me on camera, uh, I will give a minute for people to unmute and I will try and call on, on them as well. Uh, that being the case, first hand up. On, Mr. On Mr. President, may I make a comment just quickly? Um, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just uh, this has been properly advertised. This hearing has. Uh, notice was given in the paper of the ordinance. It was shared with the law library. And we will take comment tonight and then council can deliberate next week and their plan is to have it on the agenda for voting on next week. So um, my anticipation, unless the solicitor has a different thought is we'll just be hearing the comments from the public tonight and then next week you'll be deliberating and voting on the ordinance. Is that, yeah. is that good, Gavin? So as a, as a matter of, of course, um, 
first kind of just generally public hearing is always just kind of a comment from from the public unlike i think when we have our general comments um i'm much more strict there isn't kind of a back and forth in this space because it's literally for us to digest the process the, the, the comments of the public so that we can take that back with us deliberate and come up with with kind of our our answers in our own space um to your point uh alex as the borough manager said it is is correct in setting the timeline and what the expectation is and how uh, the borough will address the issue uh, that having been said uh, we are now kind of moving into the space of the public hearing uh, in which we will listen to uh, comments from the public uh, beginning with Joel Carrick. Uh, hello Joel Carrick, uh, 116 Marywood Drive. Uh, firstly thank you all for dealing with us chicken folk these past months. Uh, while there are many things I'm still not pleased about with the ordinance uh, getting the legislation to this point is awesome, and I'm excited to hopefully be able to raise chickens this summer. Uh, so anyway, thank you. Um, you said this is not a period where we can ask questions. We are only giving comments. I mean, you can ask questions just so you know, but we are not going to be able to answer them back and forth. That's kind of okay. Kind of and point. also, also uh, is Philip Plower present at this meeting? The your chicken expert. Getting shake. Okay, uh, it would have been nice to ask him some questions too. Uh, but I guess I'll just state all my questions in the form of concerns. Uh, so uh, one of them I have is the requirement to vaccinate the chickens according to vet veterinarian recommendations. Um, I am not clear on what the veterinarian recommendations are on regarding vaccinating chickens. Uh, there is no industry standard. Uh, so I uh, would like that to be cleared up uh, eventually, I guess. Uh, another concern I had is in the required dimensions of the chicken coop, uh, not to mention the oddly specific building material requirements. Uh, so now it, as it is written, a four chicken coop would have to be a minimum of 12 square feet in size. Uh, everything I've seen would suggest that this is too large for wintering over chickens in the coop. The hens would need a smaller space to be able to keep warm. Um, also, why not allow coop roofs and food storage solutions to be made out of uh, like very durable plastic? There are any predator and vermin prefabricated options. So uh, why the limit to metal and shingles? Uh, let's see, another concern. Uh, I guess not really concern, but uh, just for clarification, uh, I was wondering what the official Churchill Borough Code definition of a backyard versus a front yard or side yard is. Uh, if, where's the official cutoff and uh, where is that located in the code so I can about it and make sure I'm uh, also um, once the ordinance is passed next week which it will be since I haven't really heard any resistance from council uh, what will the process be for getting an inspector to come out and look at my property will there be a link on the borough web page or something and how soon can we expect something like that to be available um, looking at my list, I think that's all the questions I had. Um, just, I guess I would like to encourage council to pass this ordinance next week. And, uh, thanks again for your time. Jay, you are muted. I, I know I am. I, I, was, <laughs> actually saying, I gotcha. was actually saying I was muted. I was saying it. It was coming out. That's what I was saying while I was muted. Just want to yeah. be uh, nonetheless, your, your point, my, my point was, uh, your points are noted. We appreciate your comments. Um, I will look for anybody else who had any comments in regard to this. Uh, yes, Melanie, I don't see anybody else. One second, just checking. Don't see anybody else on the raised hand. You are up. Hi, I hope I'm unmuted. Um, Melanie Henninger, 32 Churchill Road. Um, thanks for your time tonight. I do also want to agree with most of what Joel said. Um, the ordinance as it stands uh, seems to create more work for the borough. Um, so I don't really understand that. I, I do understand that the borough is probably trying to um, make sure that the people that do not want to have chickens or maybe do not even want to live next door to chickens is covered. So I certainly understand that why we're erring on the um, side of having more uh, ordinances or more, um, more specific information than not. Um, I do support backyard chickens for Churchill. I do think it's something that is also going to help keep our borough um, current. 
I don't want to say trendy, but um, you know, new residents are looking at this as well. Um, much like I spoke uh, in favor of recycling how many years ago, I do think this is something that is gonna keep Churchill Borough um, current. So I am for that as well. Um, I don't understand um, quite, I, I, again, I do think that we've, that the ordinance is almost too specific because it is going to create more work for the borough to have a chicken inspector and things like that. Whereas we don't have a specific like Mm, driveway inspector and we have ordinances about driveways. I, I, I think that having that kind of falls under general uh, borough inspections and having a very specific chicken inspector is not necessarily um, something that's necessary, but I understand why that we've gone th that direction. So, um, but I am in, in favor of the ordinance. I do think that the people that are going to put in the time and the money to get to go and start and have the coop and things like this aren't going to just neglect them, um, which I know is a concern. So um, thanks for your time. Thank you. I had to check and make sure I was unmuted. Uh, okay, I'm looking to see if there are any other uh, comments on uh, the public hearing. Um, looking through the kind of raised hand thing, I don't see anything. Uh, viewing through the kind of visual space, um, I've covered that. And I will give an extra moment if there's anybody on the call who's on, who's on just a phone call or doesn't have video who would like to speak, please unmute yourself. Uh, that will give me the, the capacity to, to call on you. I see, April, I don't know if you want to speak. I see you unmuted. So I'm going to pass on okay, it. Oh, there you are. I wasn't going to talk about the chickens, but I support the chicken ordinance, and I hope that it's available to all members, all residents in the borough, not just people with large lots. Uh, you know, in fact, through uh, borough minutes, this has been discussed since before 2016, so I'm glad to see that council has finally addressed the issue. And I agree with Melanie, it's not just trendy, uh, it is a basic um, uh, amenity that young families are looking for to be able to uh, raise chickens in the borough. A lot of people already have them, uh, albeit illegally, so I'm glad that we're regulating this. And that's all. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Thank you for your comment. Uh, any other comments on this issue? All right. I appreciate everyone's comments on uh, the issue. I would uh, look to call to close the, uh, the public hearing uh, and we can move on to uh, our council workshop. Any other steps that we need in this space, uh, my, my okay solicitor? I think you got everything under control, Mr. President. Thank you. You know, there was a time you were great. Hello, uh, Jim DePerna is still here. Hi, Jim. Jim, 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 you're, you're more than welcome to, to speak. I'll leave it back open for a second. Just do me a favor in the future. Either I said you can wave your hand so I can see you because I see you got your camera on. It's a little, there you go. And then I know that you wanted to speak. Not okay. a problem. Jim, let, let, let's keep it open to make sure you have an opportunity to speak. And this is specifically on the issue of the chicken ordinance. Floor is yours. Oh, no, I'm not in. I have no comment on the chicken ordinance. Okay, so the, the purpose of this is under, the, is under the, the public hearing for the chicken ordinance, Jim. So I appreciate that. We will have another opportunity in just a few minutes um, to have public comment in general. Okay, that's fine. But this was for the chicken ordinance. So uh, that being the case, uh, now, now, Jim, you're making me look for other people who may not have been waved their hands. So I'll give them a second. Uh, I see no one else. And so now we will, we will close the, the public hearing. Uh, I appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, we take them all very seriously. Uh, at this point, we're gonna move on to uh, the regular council workshop, uh, which will require a new roll call to make sure everybody's here. Even though I, you know, I'm, I'm sure nobody left, although I'm sure I could drive a few council members away. And so, um, Mr. Manager, if you'd like to begin with, uh, with roll call, we can move ourselves forward. Secretary notes all have remained in present and we'll make proper notation in the minutes. Perfect, thank you. Uh, at this point, now we go back to public comment. Um, so same, same game, different day. Uh, effectively, I will look if you're able, if you want to make a comment, and this can include uh, the, the chicken issue or the ordinance, it can include anything else that you'd like to comment on, quite frankly, uh, in relation to our time here in the borough. If you would like to make a comment, please state your name, <coughs> excuse me, your, your address, 
and you'll have time to do so. Uh, if you go to participants, you can raise your hand. I'll start there. Then I'll go to people that I see on video and then people on calls. So starting with anybody on the participant, raise hand. I see you, Jim. I'll call you in a second. <clears throat> Let me see if I get anybody on the participant side. I don't think I see anybody who's raised their hand there. Uh, and so I will move to uh, the video space of the, the waving Jim raised hand. Eyes up. <laughs> I'm going to go Jim and then I'm going to go Susan right after. So Jim, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I wonder if you can give me a few extra minutes here. I'm represent because so I'm representing two, two the things, Republican committee. Two things. Um, One, I need you to state your name, your address. I can't give additional time. It's three. It's three minutes unless uh, there was a specific issue in which you're speaking for a group that was here. Mm -hmm. uh, unless unless I'm wrong, Mr. Solicitor, I believe that that, that is the, the standard rule. Uh, so as a result, I can give you three minutes, but make sure you state your name and your address, and the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, Jim DePerna, uh, 1616 Branning Road. And I'm a church resident. And the uh, the comment I'd like to make is uh, on the uh, the enormous surcharge here for the sewage. Uh, I looked at my I couldn't believe my sewage and water bill this month. It was a uh, hundred and seventy dollars, uh, and I have a small house. You know, uh, I can imagine what other people are seeing, but um, there seems to be some sort of an inconsistency here. I uh, when I looked at the calculation, it showed it really shows about a forty dollar, forty one dollar increase for twelve thousand gallon usage in a quarter. But uh, if you get a letter from the water authority, they claim that five thousand gallons is average usage. So that would even raise the amount of uh, the increase. So I'm I'm really concerned. Uh, why is it that we have such a huge sewage surcharge? And 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 sewage bill in, in a small borough like uh, Churchill, when for example Edgewood's uh, surcharge is about half that of of uh, Churchill's, and but they're about the same size uh, geographically anyway. I don't know about the number of schools. So I asked about this a couple months ago and never heard from anybody. Um, before the increase, but now after the increase, it might be nice to hear some explanation. Why the why is the sewage such a, so expensive here? And now also, I would like to view the Hillsdale plot plan for the Amazon development in Westinghouse property. Is any uh, to see how the where the traffic is going, and um, is is there a chance that I can come to the borough building and view the actual plot plan? And um, and also, um, we'd like to make an ad in the next newsletter for the Churchill Republican Committee to try to get uh, see if anyone is interested in joining. And uh, also, we'd like to make a, I, I would offer to make a presentation to you folks, since I was on Edgewood Borough Council as an elected official 30 years ago when the Edgewood Town uh, Center was developed when the uh, Wabco industrial complex uh, buildings and, and complex were torn down to make uh, for this so-called uh, improvement development. So if you are interested, I, I could show you some of the uh, details of that uh, development and uh, what happened and why it didn't exactly work out as, as intended and things you might be can, interested in being aware of. Uh, with a uh, proposed uh, developer's agreement, you're going to, I presume you're going to make a developer's agreement. So if you would like me to do that, I'd be more than happy to talk to council at your convenience, or if you would prefer the planning commission. Uh, and that's all I really wanted to bring up. Um, but the sewage is, you know, $170 a month sewage uh, water bill on a, my house is only about 1500 square feet i i just can't imagine what other people are getting so jim I, I that that is your time i appreciate your comment i will give you kind of three very fast answers to your comment number one we've talked about the sewage and the, and the need on the infrastructure both ourselves and quite frankly from us from outside of us kind of on, on the ms4 that, that's unrelated to us uh in terms of, of the increases we've been talking about it for some time uh the second thing in terms of uh the westinghouse plans uh, those are available, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bureau Manager, 
um, that what we've made available, everything that we can, uh, that we post everything that we can online when we're able to. Uh, am I missing anything in that space? Well, to accommodate people who can't make it online, we can make appointments for a visual inspection at the borough building. And Mr. Patern um, DePerna knows how to get a hold of me to make those arrangements and following, you know, COVID protocols because the building's not open yet. But we can't make them available for inspection. Thank you. Appreciate that. And then lastly, we, you know, as, as government, we don't necessarily participate in partisan politics. Uh, and so placing ads, and I, and I will go out on a limb and, the, you know, Mr. Rob, feel free to, uh, to opine with your mediocre solicitor skill set. Uh, but uh, as government, we don't really jump into the space of partisan politics. We would not allow for the Democratic Party, the Green Party, the you know, Socialist Party, the Republican Party, or any other party to put into the newsletter. Um, the Democrats do it. The Democrats have put ads in the newsletter. So under our time, we don't, we don't have the Democratic Party putting ads in the newsletter. They have in the past. If I'm incorrect, so somebody correct me in that space. I looked to the three people that would correct me. None of them are saying anything. I had to, I had to unmute. Um, I, I believe with, with the Democratic Party, and it's actually not the Democrat, it's the, um, what we placed in there were just um, dates and, and times and the location of polling places. There was no advertisements looking for new members into the Democratic Party. So yeah, placing nonpartisan information on, on the polling places that the Republican Party would like to add that to, um, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Placing information on membership or partisan activities uh, is not going to be a space for, for council government to entertain. Uh, having said that, uh, I will look for, for other comments. I'm moving on to Susan, Susan Sterrett. Hi, I'm Susan Starrett. Um, I reside with my husband at 1903 Hampstead Drive. Um, I, I'm currently a resident. Um, I wanted to follow up on something I had said earlier. I think I had said earlier at one of these meetings that um, I had suggested that uh, as a backup in case the Hillwood uh, project doesn't move forward, I mean, there's some chance that that could happen, uh, that we'd be thinking about um, alternative uses that um, might actually be a benefit to the borough, not just a, a uh, something that is to be tolerated. And um, so I have since then actually given a letter to the borough, and I just thought I'd mention what that, um, what that idea was and, and an update on it. And um, I just explained one idea that it might be used for would be a what's called a microgrid, and there are developers who are willing to do this. It can actually be a money-making project, but it can also provide a benefit to the borough in providing resiliency, to providing power. Um, so uh, in, in the case the grid goes down, in case of extreme weather events, things like that, there could be damages to houses from freezing like what happened in Texas. And so I, I wrote that to the borough, and since then, um, the, there's been even more federal money available to help communities. It's called something like community resilience. And so there's a big federal concern now about making sure that, um, that small municipalities are able to take care of themselves with respect to power when, the, um, when there's a challenge to the grid. So I just wanted to say, say that, and I can provide more information on that. I have already provided some. The second one was, uh, was raised by uh, an answer that Hillwood gave to one of the questions. One of the questions was who's going to take care of maintenance on the property. And um, I guess I usually thought that the owner of a property takes care of it and then the renters, uh, you know, the renters occupy it and count on the owner. But their answer was different than I expected. They said, oh no, Amazon will be responsible for taking care of the place. And I wondered if that raised any new issues that the borough ought to think about. Um, so uh, if the responsibility is of the renter and not the owner of the property, uh, the care of the grounds, um, yeah, does that raise new issues? And then taking it further, what about maintenance um, on the cleaning out the storm? The storm system, um, Hillwood also came back and, or somebody did, maybe uh, it was the engineer, came back and, and gave a report on how much maintenance would be required and it was astounding, astounding amount of money. And the question is, 
Um, is is that something that Hellwood is going to say the the leaser that is Amazon has to take care of? Um, I think that could be a big question. So I wonder if we could hear whether there are already um, mechanisms in place or rules in place, or whether um, if that's not the case, whether we ought to be thinking about what rules should be in place. So that was the second thing. Um, and then uh, the third thing also had to do with responsibilities. And um, we think of Hillwood as having a huge amount of money, but I know even huge projects like Westinghouse used to have infinite amount of money and then they went bankrupt. Um, for a huge project like this, there's a fear that, uh, you know, if it stops halfway when they run out of money. So the question is, is there a requirement? Um, does the borough have a requirement before a permit is for a huge construction so I, project is granted. Yeah, that's, that's your time. I okay, your I think you got the point. Thank uh, you. You know, in a, in a 10 second kind of response, I'm sure when we go around the table, we'll, we'll have far more on this. Uh, but in the space of this, the one thing I would always remind the residents, uh, you know, the borough is not the developer. And so the decisions that are made in terms of, you know, their relationship with the renters or themselves or the owners is not necessarily the position that a borough takes. Uh, and so I wouldn't wade into that space necessarily. I would leave that as those are private agreements that take place. Where the borough wades into any space is if code violations take place that we're aware of, then we could then we would enforce our code. That is the role of the borough. The role of the borough is not to intercede in in, in business relationships. Right, that would be kind of an inappropriate space of government. Just as kind of a side note, but certainly we we uphold and would would be expect we would expect that we uphold our codes. Um, I will leave anything else if people want to comment around the table. Uh, I'm looking if there's anybody else in the space. I see Mr. Ken Belke with, with his right hand up. I got to reverse the mirror. Uh, Mr. Belke, the, the floor is yours. Uh, name address. It's like, I, I'm pretty sure I know who you are. And uh, okay. we'll <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> Ken Belke uh, resided 2007 Hampstead Drive in the Royal Oak Plan. <clears throat> uh, my comments are dealing with our tree committee work. I have a couple. Nice news items to report. The first one being we will be holding our first uh, tree planting event, uh, the Woodland Hills Elementary School at Wilkins Elementary next Thursday, April the 15th. And there will be about 30 fourth grade students who will be planting at least 20, maybe as many as 50 trees uh, on the school property next Thursday morning. And um, that's the first of many that that the school district hopes to have over the next year and a half. And then in concert with Earth Day <clears throat> on April 22nd, Tree Pittsburgh is going to be having a tree adoption program at the high school beginning at three o'clock for any residents of Woodland Hills School District. And so anybody can come. These are for trees for people to take back to their own residence for planning. And you, you have to, uh, uh, you have to make, re register for picking up. You can get two trees per person is uh, the way they have the event set up. And uh, information about the event is on the school district website. It's uh, pretty prevalent in the way they have it. And I've given that information over to our borough manager asking if, he, if it was appropriate, if he could put it on our website as well too. And then finally, um, we had a chance to meet with the, um, the head of Duquesne Light and the, the tree pruning committee uh, for Duquesne Light who are going through, they've been in the borough already uh, several months this year and they'll be continuing work throughout the borough in the coming months. And they just wanted to get feedback. So I took pictures of uh, trees that I thought were inappropriately, uh, you know, particularly evergreens that have been topped in many places. And I can see why they did it, but the other hand, um, they agreed that the tree really didn't look very good at the end of, of their effort. Uh, I couldn't cover every situation in the borough, but uh, the, the line of communication is definitely open. They've come back and they definitely improved uh, one of the pin oak trees at the top of Holland Drive um, over near the Nottingham side of, of Holland Road. They, they improved the tree after our call. And then uh, we're working with homeowners who had evergreens top, particularly those that were in the right of way to see if the homeowner, it might be just best to get the tree removed out. Um, it really aesthetically is not very pleasing with uh, the way that it was set in that case. 
but uh, we were very pleased with the uh, response that we got from um, the head of the, the trimming of for Duquesne Light. So uh, that's all I have. I have more comments on trees dealing with the uh, Churchill Creek development, but I'll reserve those for Wednesday during the planning commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bucky. Just, just a quick shout out to, to Ken. I was talking with my neighbor today who is one of the original owners on, on like Garrick, Garrick Development. And uh, she just got back from the hospital. She hasn't had much time to uh, speak about things, but she was talking about the trees and how, you know, she was here when they planted all the pin oaks in my development. And what a shame it was that so many of them have been taken down, uh, yep. but that she knows that there's a, a tree committee that is dedicated to working in the community. So I just wanted to give you the shout out when, uh, when you know, people are, are giving me the shout. I want to make sure that you know that, that folks are, are excited and happy to what you're doing. So thank you, Ken. Thank uh, you. I'm going to move forward to, I have uh, no name that I can give, just a DMM74. Uh, so you, you are on the hands up. I'm sorry, it's Danielle Weaver, 880 Danielle. Boulevard. I just have a comment mainly for Mr. Balky. I found out today there's a company called Urban Tree located in Homewood. We had to have a black walnut taken down and couldn't find anybody that wanted the wood. This place will take it, you donate it to them, and they make it into furniture and, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, the cutting boards and tables. And it just, there's an urban tree. If you go on their website, there's a video that you can watch of the company. Um, I just thought it was interesting and I wanted to pass it along. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weaver. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Carrick, I see the hand is up. I'll come to you, Melanie. I see, I see you waving the hand as well. Uh, Mr. Carrick, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a separate three minutes, right? That's um, right. All right. Uh, well, uh, so, and we can and we can have a conversation now, right? I, I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to talk to the to, to what I can. I don't have to move so. I just, uh, back to my clarification about uh, where the backyard begins and the front yard ends. I was wondering if anyone could point me to the part of the code that would maybe explain that a little further. So don't know, don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, we can take a look and see if we can get something to you. Uh, with, Mr. President, I, I would say it's probably in the zoning ordinance. Uh, there's a definition of rear yard, front yard, and side yard. Uh, so that, that should be uh, where, where you want to start out. Thank you for my sub-mediocre solicitor. I appreciate your comments. Uh, move, moving forward, you, I don't want to take up your time, so, so continue. Uh, I think that's the only, uh, the, the main one. There's, there was a, a lot of chicken-specific ones, but I don't, I don't know if you, you probably don't have the answers like to the vaccines and all that, but uh, mostly, mostly just where I'm allowed to put the chicken coop is what I was wondering. Um, oh, I'll, also, I guess I'll, I'll ask, um, do you have an idea of like the timeline of when we can start getting inspected for, for having chicken coops or, or like after, after it gets passed? Or I, I, will up, up my head, I will defer to, to the uh, subpar solicitor that we that we've contracted with. Well, I think this is almost, <laughs> oh wait, are, 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 were you talking to me? <laughs> um, I, I think uh, I think this is actually partly going to be uh, in conjunction with how long it's going to take the manager to, to set up the system, but let's assume that the, uh, the ordinance is approved at the meeting uh, next Monday. Uh, we would then prepare a, an application form and sort of work out exactly what, what materials need to be submitted um, as part of that process. So the, the ordinance itself leaves a little bit of latitude as to how uh, the administration of the ordinance and the approvals is gonna work. So I, I don't wanna put uh, Mr. Graziani on the spot, but. I would have to think that assuming it's it's passed, uh, you know, next week, that within the next couple of weeks after that, we could probably have something in place to get everyone up and running as quickly as possible. Thanks, Joel. I appreciate your comments. Try, try and answer as much as we can for you. Uh, moving on to, to Melanie, uh, the floor, floor is yours. Floor is mine if I can unmute my microphone. <laughs> um, Melanie Huntinger, 32 Churchill Road. Um, I would like to speak to the Hillwood development. Um, 
my neighbors on here probably aren't going to be very happy with me. However, um, I think I am obviously, I think a lot of people in church are for development of some sort in that site. The problem that I think, my opinion, we are running into is that no one wants to pay the huge mitigation fees to be able to use and build on that site. So as someone else indicated, I'm sorry, I forgot their name. You know, there are Sure, there are a lot of other things that we'd love to have in that space, a yoga studio, a coffee shop, a this or that, whatever, it'd be great. However, no one's going to pay to do what they have to do to that property to make it useful. So in that regard, I would say, sure, it would be great to have something in there that we're going to get some kind of tax base from in Churchill Borough. However, I can't really find, and I haven't gone through the documents super thoroughly, but I cannot find any information on what our financial um, benefit is going to be. I know our taxes aren't going down, but perhaps we could not raise them for a few years. Um, you know, is that feasible? I know no one's going to guarantee numbers at this point, um, but, you know, like, why would we want something in there? The only reason that most people are going to agree to something in there, especially something that's going to cause some traffic problems, pretty large environmental concern is if we're going to get something from it. So what are we getting from it as tax payers? I, you know, our, our property taxes are insane. Our school district needs help. So are, is, is whoever's going in there, Amazon or where, wherever, are they going to, what are they going to provide for our school district? What are they going to provide to us as property owners? That's the only reason anyone's going to agree to put something in there that is may not be the best fit for our community, but it's something. Um, so I'm not sure what the, what fine, I'd like some more information on what they're saying the financial benefit to us as a borough could be. Um, we could check my notes. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, I, I am for obviously something in there. Do I want a mammoth Amazon warehouse thing in there? No. Could I deal with a medium sized Amazon distribution center if we're going to get some um, financial um, benefit from it, yeah, and I think that most taxpayers could uh, could we can meet somewhere in the middle. I know that there are people that there's no chance we're meeting them anywhere, um, but I think that if we could perhaps look, uh, make more available what our our benefit is, that more people may be willing to look into it a little further as to just writing it off. Thank you. You're welcome. And without weighing in in any way. Um... I would, I would look in, I, I look at my kind of last solicitor we could find that was willing to work for Churchill. Um, but I think it's fair that the, that the, the public information on, on the, the proposed, like the general assessment is, is public. Am, am I incorrect in that or not? When you, when you say general assessment, are you referring like, to just like the, what they put their property is like what they thought the cost of the project would be? Yes. Yeah. They've announced several times. Um, although I, I actually, let me step back. The initial project was proposed at I think roughly 300 million. Um, the revised, uh, slightly smaller, or I guess significantly smaller, maybe it's 25% smaller, maybe not quite that much. I don't think they've given us a firm estimate on that, uh, unless Mr. Graziani maybe has one. The solicitor speaks accurately. It's about 23% less, and we don't have a definitive number of the value they estimate. So, to, to put a quick kind of answer in. Uh, to your to your point, Melly, um, the the revenue is is substantial. Uh, our our total kind of, if you look at the if you took the mean uh, household price that we have uh, and looked at that at taxable revenue, multiplied it by the number of, of homes that we have, um, it actually comes out slightly less than the original appraisal of of the of the project that they were looking at doing. Um, so the tax revenue is is substantial. Um, and to your point, uh, if, if that were something that, that moved forward, um, it's something that we would, we would certainly look at in, in terms of how we can benefit our residents. Additionally, in that space, um, I think one of the real challenges that we know exists uh, is our school district and the needs of this particular district. Uh, and so I think there's been considerable conversation in that space from, from them. So uh, without being able to get too specific in the space, I can say we certainly wouldn't uh, in fact, I, I will say that every council member takes this obviously extremely serious, recognizing that this is this shapes the future of Churchill, no matter what decisions made, including not deciding. 
And so as, as a result, I think every council person takes us through the lens of how does this benefit Churchill? Um, so I, I would be remiss if I did not say that because I think um, whether people are for it or against it, whether they are for a different development or this development, um, everyone has considered this through the lens specifically of how does this benefit the residents of Churchill? Because as it turns out, every one of us are also the residents of Churchill, right? Uh, and so if it doesn't benefit us, then, then it's not something that we're, we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, Mike Connors. Good evening. Uh, Mike Connors, 2200 William Penn Highway. Um, I'd like to speak to the Hillwood um, development, uh, kind of echo a little bit of what Melanie's saying. Um, I'm going to go one step further, though, uh, in the, something that Susan also said. Uh, in regards to the effects of that development being there. So the stormwater, you know, the, there are certain regulations that they have to meet to, to try to retain the, the stormwater, um, but it's going to affect beyond that property. Um, and that's going to incur costs to the borough. Um, a, a renter or the owner of the property is, is not going to go down and fix washed out roads on Beulah, as an example. Um, uh, the other aspect is just the overall, well, every, everything that surrounds it. What happens on the property, there's, there's lots of regulations and codes, um, uh, but off the property, uh, the traffic situation, you know, they started off with a roundabout, now there's no roundabout. Um, you know, they changed the exit from a, a curly queue to a little bit straighter line, makes sense. Um, why not continue that straight line and have an entrance ramp so that they're not trying to use the one at, off a of Churchill Road, um, try to isolate themselves as much as possible, create as least havoc to the community as possible. Um, but a lot of that it, it pertains to PennDOT as well, because the, the roads that surround are, are, are managed more by PennDOT than they are by the municipality. Um, and reading through the literature, uh, PennDOT kind of wavered here and there. And um, at first they were leaning towards doing all these traffic changes and now they seem to be backing off of that. Um, I, I guess it all comes back down to this. First off, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you all on council for trying to handle this project. It, it's a massive project. There's an awful lot that you have to be studious on. Um, and frankly, there's no way that you can really be completely intelligent on all of it. Um, you're not all civil engineers. You're not, you know, so on and so forth. I served on municipal government before, and, and I know when a project comes into this magnitude, um, typically, the best, the best thing is to try to find some experts outside of the issue uh, to render their, their opinion. Uh, I wonder if that's been approached in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, all the, the traffic studies and so on and so forth have been submitted by uh, Hillwood, you know. Um, and, you know, maybe an independent source would be a better, uh, a better you know, thing. Uh, the, the, the water retention uh, and the issues that it can cause. Again, uh, there's no really outside impartial um, group that uh, uh, can verify this, that, or the other thing. Once it's built, um, they can satisfy all the codes within that property and create total havoc in the community, and there's no recourse. I, I appreciate your, your time and your time is up is a, is a kind of quick understanding. Uh, what comes into us that's provided by their engineers is reviewed by our engineers. Um, and so we certainly would not just take the, the word of, of the developers engineers uh, in making <clears throat> assessments. Uh, as it turns out, we have uh, an outstanding engineer with a wonderful, beautiful baby uh, who sits in here, uh, Dennis Flynn, who, you know, in, in tandem, quite frankly, uh, works with our kind of substandard last guy on the block solicitor, uh, Gavin Rob, who, you know, when, you, when you're picking people and you get down to the last person, that's kind of how our solicitor game went. 
Uh, and so the, the two of them, though, have, have certainly, uh, you know, we, we continue to do our due, due diligence. Um, you know, any borough uh, who's trying to, under, you know, undertake addressing this kind of development um, is going to need a number of outside resources. And quite frankly, Dennis works not just himself. We're not working with just Dennis as Dennis. We have, you know, the, the traffic engineers who handle the traffic. We have, so it's, it's kind of a team in order to, in order to address this. Uh, that's just the, the reality of it. Quite frankly, this kind of development you normally see in the city of Pittsburgh or in the city of Detroit or in the city, not in the, 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 the tiny outlying suburb. Right. Uh, and so quite, that also gives us some strengths to where you're, where you're thinking about where people can and can't do things on the outside. Um, there are streets and we can regulate differently than if we were the city of Pittsburgh. So I'm going to leave that there, but I, I do certainly appreciate uh, your comments, Mike. They're, they're, very, they're solid comments. So thank you very much. Um, I'm looking to see if there are any others in the public comment space before we do move our way past this. These have been really great comments, and I truly appreciate them. Uh, okay. Yes, there we go. And I'm needed April. Yes, the floor is yours. Yes, April Klein, 18 Holland Road. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Ken Balky for all his work on the Tree Trimming Commission and agree with him on the inappropriate uh, trimming by Duquesne Light. Um, some of you know I'm a master gardener with Phipps Botanical Gardens and I work with Penn State Extension and uh, we have studied uh, urban tree trimming and Duquesne Light is not following the guidelines. Uh, second, I want to thank Paul Gamrat for his support of the Allegheny Land Trust purchase of the Churchill Valley Greenway project. There's going to be a cleanup on 410 and I hope that area residents will join us in that cleanup of the Shawfront Run watershed. Um, and uh, I also want to um, mention that um, while I respect Mr. DePerna's uh, comments, he does not speak for the Republican Party in Churchill. Uh, the Republican Party in Churchill disbanded after the 216 election over disagreement uh, of a variety of reasons. Uh, some have to do with the candidate, some have to do with other issues. Uh, and there are many uh, Republicans in Churchill that do not support Mr. DePerna's views. And uh, please take that into consideration that his views are his views alone and not for the uh, entire Republican um, membership of Churchill Borough. Thank you very much. Duly noted, I appreciate your comments as always. Uh, and I would, I would be remiss if I did not, in kind of a pre-COVID space, uh, you know, April has, has volunteered her time uh, to the borough. Obviously, she continues to, but we're in a little different space now. Uh, but I do want to thank you because I know uh, you, you've, you've done and continue to do work and your, your opinion in that space, uh, particularly uh, with both trees and gardening, is, is, is important to me. So thank you very much, April. Um, any other comment or we're going to move our way into uh, uh, discussion items if, if I don't see anything else? Well, thank you all for, for the comments. They were really kind of strong comments and, and we appreciate them. Um, at this time, we'll move into uh, discussion items. Uh, first of all, just acknowledging that everyone's received uh, the, the minutes. Um, and so as long as we've received them uh, for both the uh, regular workshop, the, uh, the regular meeting and, and the special meeting that we had regarding the hiring of the officers, um, unless there were some particular comments people needed to make on those now uh, or any of the other uh, reports. I would point out that, that there may be a couple reports that come a little bit later in the week, so keep your eye open. Uh, if they come in, I'll, I'll have a kind of email that goes out to you uh, to let you know as well. Um, so that being the case, kind of hitting three and four together, um, any comments that need to be made, Mr. Mayor, Treasurer, anything that we need to be pointed out as we start to look at, uh, at reports? Uh, as you know, oops, my, my, oh, let me unmute myself here. You're unmuted. We actually can hear you. All right. But, um, the, the mayor's report will be coming next uh, Monday, as you know that. So I did get it from the chief today. I will be working on that. No no worries, unless there's something, uh, you know, key and crucial that points out, um, you know, we'll, we'll review it when we see it. It's, it's always a strong report. I, do, I will mention, though, today that uh, um, one of the two officers that we... Uh, recently hired started today. Um, Officer Sage started today and also Officer Hutt will begin his um, tenure with the borough tomorrow as well. Yes, two, two brand new officers to uh, 
to our streets. Not brand new officers are on the streets, but to our streets. And I think they will be uh, wonderful additions. I don't know if, if council members have had a chance, um, but if you, you get a chance to meet them, they're, they're, uh, they're good folks, good, good new officers for us. Uh, anything else coming out of that that uh, that first or second space with regard to uh, uh, anything to point out on minutes that, that people need to be made aware of? Anything on, on reports that you want people to be made aware of at this time? Uh, all right. Uh, that being the case, we're going to move on to item number five, uh, which is uh, the awarding of the road paving. I tend to turn this back to our, our borough manager for a minute for to lead discussion and then we'll, we can jump into that space. So I'm, I wanna make sure you guys can see the agenda. So I'm just gonna scroll down a bit. Uh, obviously we advertised and received bids for the 2021 road paving program. The bids are listed, including the, the alternates in addition to the base bid. So what you're seeing is the table. I'm not sure how it views on phones or different screens, but below that, and people can go online to download this agenda. If they want to have it on a separate screen, they're welcome to do that. Or if they'd like to print it out before the meeting, we try to post it as early as we can. But the, the bottom part of that are just what those bids are. So the base bid is Woodland Hills Drive, that long drive coming up through there in Jamestown Place. And then the ad alternates where we wanted to get a price on Margate Road, McCready Road from Beulah to Chapel Hill. The third is McCready Road from Chapel Hill to the new pavement. So think where Chapel Hill is and head east towards the off ramp from the parkway and coming up out of uh, Old 22. And then the last one is Brush Cliff Road. So just kind of going back up there, the apparent low bid uh, was A. Liberoni Incorporated, and it worked out pretty good because they were the low bid for each of the alternates as well. Sometimes it gets a little nuanced when bids are presented, but as you can see, for example, the ad alternate number two, which is Beulah to Chapel Hill, McCready Road, that segment by the Beulah Church, Presbyterian Church, is a, would be an additional 99000 and some change on top of the base bid of 195000 the last thing Krista added to the agenda that we want you to call your attention to is the 21, 21 budget or 2021 council budget adopted in December of 2020 include $283,050 for the road paving program. Just to give you an idea how that works. So that's the money we budgeted to get from uh, the liquid fuels fund, for example, to pave roads within our community. So going back up, the base bid, 195, and you can see the ad alternates if those were added. And I anticipate council will vote on this next week to award the bid as they will the following bids that we'll discuss here momentarily. Mr. Engineer, um, Dennis, do you have anything else to add or Krista, did I miss anything? I think you covered pretty much everything there. Um, the uh, A. Liberoni, the, the low bidder, has worked in Churchill before and has, has performed this work in a number of other municipalities, so uh, they, they would be a qualified bidder. And the only thing I have to add on is today we actually received notice from the state that the amount of liquid fuels that we intend to receive, we will receive in a couple of dollars more, so it, uh, our estimates are on par. Okay. Uh, the idea... Alice and Christopher and Dennis is to maybe do the basic bid and take on one of the alternates. That's what I would like to consider doing. Yeah, at your leisure. You know, I know the infrastructure, Matt, we talked a little bit today about that. You had had a discussion with Ralph, our public service director. So I'll jump in real quick. Uh, talking with Ralph, uh, you know, I think we covered this in the infrastructure meeting last time, but, uh, you know, his, his recommendation, and I tend to agree with him, would be to do the base bid and then add alternate to, um, cause you know, McCready road is, is really in pretty rough shape. Uh, you know, his thought was that, that Margate and brush cliff can probably be tied, you know, tied over for another year or two with some, uh, patching and that, uh, you know, we should focus our efforts on, on doing the, uh, the base stuff and then adding alternate number two, which would put us, I think 2% over our budget. So we'd be doing very well. Thanks, Matt. 
I would like to point out too that there are um, some contingencies or additional unit items within there too in order to provide some some buffer to the municipality. So it's um, it, and anything can happen because it is a unit price contract could go up. But uh, over the past two years, we have seen lower final contract price below uh, uh, that of the bids. Thanks, Dennis. Is there Dennis. a percentage? Sorry, is there a percentage for the buffer that was used? Um, it it depends on uh, each road. It's based on uh, expected undercut. Normally, it's uh, anticipated of a fifteen percent undercut per road. Thank you. So the uh, I guess the other comment would be there then if if as we uh, you know progress through some of the the paving, Dennis, would it be possible then to, you know, maybe add alternate number four as we started the work and, you know, realized we may have some additional savings that we could cover that? May I have to d defer to the solicitor here in regards to how we award the contract? Right, uh, you know, that, that bid's generally good for 60 days. Um, so I think to the extent that that determination could be made very early on, it's a possibility. We'd have to look at the specs a little bit, but it's, you know, if it happens later on down the road, probably not likely. Understood. Mr. President, may I add something to that question, please? Please speak. So Matt and, and Kevin, we had this conversation as well. The beginning balance you know, coming into the year was pretty good and we anticipate the ending balance might be pretty good. And we also later on in the agenda have something to talk about, you know, related to funding. So if you look at the two other alternates, not alternate one, but if you look at uh, what would be C and D, those two roads that we discussed, um, you could add those to this and not be way out of budget. So what I would recommend is the finance committee and the, maybe the infrastructure, I know you guys are scheduled on Wednesday, kind of hash that out and then maybe you could give a good recommendation, however you guys want to do that next Monday, so we can award with those things in mind. Okay. Excellent. David, I appreciate that. Any other comments on, on this issue before we move on to uh, the magic of camera work? All right, let's talk uh, sewer camera work. What do we got? The world starts with the borough manager when I talk like that, so. So before you, you have the, the CCTV inspection and cleaning. And like we did previously, we did advertise these bids and receive them at a public meeting. They were opened um, and have been reviewed by our engineer to make sure that everything was in order. Um, these are for three years. So we are asking them to give us a kind of a unit price for the three years. This isn't to say that we're going to do, for example, $90,000 worth of work with State Pipe and this year if they were the ones who were awarded, but it's to give us an idea if we do use their services, what would those costs be? For example, I wanna talk about unit price. A municipality might do a commodities bid for pipe and tell the bidders that we want 100 units of the pipe, but the, the bidders know we may only buy 50 in a given year, but they're giving us a price based on 100, even though we may not buy necessarily 100. And the same kind of thing works here. Similarly, the item number five, you'll notice we, we include um, the amount adopted in the budget under the sewer operation and maintenance. As uh, noted earlier, there's a surcharge to the water bill for residents in Churchill, and that sewer surcharge uh, is to take care of the, sewer, the sanitary sewer lines here in the boroughs. So we have an operation and maintenance fund but a couple considerations. And that is we have two other agreements that are out there. One is with uh, JetJack and we have a budget for them to do an up to amount of 83,580. And then also we have another one with the excavation contract, again, to do an up to with solely construction for a possible amount. Similar kind of thing that we've talked about. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna do that. In fact, what we're gonna try to do is with the combined of the three of these, do $250,000 worth of work. So we're seeing, we're showing you the, the apparent low bidder, which is state pipe services over the three years, which happens again, they have the lowest bid each year. And then what we had budgeted and in other considerations. So if there's other questions or again, Dennis or Krista, if I missed something, please chime in. Dennis, world is yours. 
Yeah, I think you covered it pretty well, Alex. Uh, just to point out again, State Pipe Services is a very qualified contractor, performs uh, CCTV in a number of municipalities and has worked in the borough in the past. Um, I would also point out that at a minimum, the borough is required to complete 10% of their uh, sewer system or uh, non-critical sewer system televised on a yearly basis. And then this contract al also uh, includes the preventative maintenance work, essentially to clean any lines that have had sags or uh, have had any, had any blockages in the past. So uh, that is what this project includes. Um, in addition to those uh, basic requirements of the consent order and O&M plan, it does require CCTV of any sewers underneath roads to be paved uh, prior to paving those roads so that any repairs could be made um, prior, so, so that we don't have to rip up a, a brain, brand new paved road. Outstanding, any other uh, comments from the committee or anyone else? You know, the only comment I have, Jay, is that, that $250,000, we still are aiming to be at that number or below with all these, with the 2021. Always, always aiming. Yes. Yeah. And, and, well, and with that, as, as uh, Alex mentioned, that these are all multi-year contracts with uh, numerous unit prices and costs, and uh, we will control that with work orders throughout the year that will be reviewed with the uh, uh, infrastructure committee prior to submitting. Okay. Outstanding. Any other comments on the issue? We're gonna we're gonna stay on sewer, so we're not we're not going far. All right. Hearing hearing no others, let's let's move down to number seven, uh, which is a wonderful repair contract out, out on Kingsdale. As before, this was properly advertised and we've received bids, as you can see, the bidder amounts for the project, which is on Kingsdale Road. This would be up from um, Beulah Road or Brown Road as it ends, it terminates down there. So it's, it would be west of the road up further uphill. And there's a section that we have, um, quite frankly, a compromised storm sewer line that has, uh, has a few small sinkholes in it and we need to address it. And you can see the amounts, uh, Jet Jack right now is the apparent low bidder. We budgeted $255,210 for storm sewer repairs. However, if you remember about this time last year, maybe February of 2020, Grand Boulevard uh, was, uh, we, we awarded a bid to Solo, Solo Construction for 111,000. So we'll be doing both of those projects this year. There was a number of reasons why we couldn't address Grand Boulevard last year. And we're getting um, updated pricing from Solide Construction. But we anticipate it to be really close to that number that was awarded to them last year. So there should be enough to, in the two projects to uh, be covered by the amount. Now remember, if other repairs are ne necessary due to emergencies, they'll come out of this fund as well. Dennis, uh, would you like to address anything or Krista? And uh, Alex, you did a pretty good job of covering everything. Uh, Jet Jack Incorporated is another contractor that has uh, performed a number of these similar type repairs for us in the past. Um, and uh, their bid does seem to cover everything that's required. The project is for about 300 feet of pipe replacement, including some uh, inlet replacement uh, of that line. This is uh, just one phase of potential further work along this uh, this pipe which has begun to fail in these backyards. Outstanding, any comments here? I'll jump in and I'll just, um, you know, to circle this whole conversation back just to the, the bigger picture, this was one of the projects that we talked about, you know, as we had our discussion about whether we were going to raise taxes, you know, which I know no one likes to do, uh, myself included, when I have to write those checks, but uh, making sure that we can repair this critical infrastructure that, you know, folks don't need to worry about their kids in the backyard, you know, falling into a pipe that's collapsing. Um, none of us wants that. None of us wants that for our residents. So, you know, we're, we're working to do that. I know we struck a good uh, balance on the budget uh, and without trying to increase it too much. And, and we're going to make the strips these dollars to, to do a lot of good work. Well said. Uh, any additional comments? All right, let's move down to, uh, it's time for hazard mitigation again, is it not? Uh, so uh, at, at this point, while I can give my own script, I will still move to, uh, to our solicitor. You know, we took a chance on him. This is, is his first borough that he got to be solicitor to, and now 
he just disrespects me at, at you know at a whim. But uh, Mr. Solicitor, you want to give a quick quick description on uh, on our basic adoption of the of the county mitigation plan? Sure, I'll give the practical uh, nickel version and Mr. Graziani, who I think has probably dug into the details a little bit more, possibly with the emergency coordinator for the borough um, and, and maybe not yet. But I can tell you the bottom line is uh, for future emergency type situations, in order to get uh, reimbursement of funds, uh, basically the, the borough has to adopt this plan. Um, and it, as if you'll recall, uh, the borough did get some level of reimbursement um, early on in the pandemic or, or, or partway through the pandemic uh, through, through a similar type of program. So um, it seems uh, it's something you sort of just got to do. You got to adopt the county, uh, the county hazard mitigation plan. Uh, but as far as the details, I'm not sure if Mr. Graziani has anything he wants to add to that. Simply, we have been a participant in the process with our emergency management coordination coordinator, as well as our fire chief. Um, you know, there's no more important thing we do to protect people property than make sure the infrastructure is safe. And the county hazard mitigation plan looks at everything from a catastrophic accident on the parkway east here, right above the building, which could uh, have devastating impacts to the people involved, as you've seen on the TV this past year in Dallas on major Interstate 35. Hundreds of vehicles involved in an accident, lots of stress on the system, to earthquakes, floods, pandemics. All of these issues, anything you can think of that would be a large scale emergency within a community are addressed and assessed to, to whether the relative um, impact that they might have, snow events, for example, as well. And participating municipalities like ours, we feed up the line what we consider to be our problems. And we put those in a, a pile, which the county composes in a list as a part of this plan. And as Gavin noted, not only in the emergencies, specifically if there is a declared emergency, we can be a part of funding but maybe to get some of these things issued. If you recall, there was a lot of stormwater damage in 2019 and those problems, we pushed up the, the, the food chain, so to speak, so that they could be recognized in this plan. And I give a lot of credit to, uh, to Scott, uh, the two Scots who are involved in emergency management with Ralph uh, to help those plans recognize our priorities. Thank you, Mr. Program Manager. And, and for, for Curator Council, this is not new for us. Um, this is this is kind of part of our obligations and making sure that we, we are part of the bigger picture. Uh, I always think about when Churchill thought that they didn't want to participate in anything from the county. And so we refused to participate in the county health department until there was the big the big uh, food poisoning scare, uh, which then motivated people to say, hey, maybe that's a good idea to participate in these county level uh, activities. And this is no different. Uh, in that there are benefits to the borough that we recognize and understand, and quite frankly, in the pandemic have actually legitimately benefited from. Uh, so uh, that's what this is. Uh, I assume language uh, gets drafted up by by our, uh, you know, used to be more grateful. Uh, I interviewed that guy, just to be clear, solicitor. Uh, and, uh, you know, at which time we will, uh, yeah, you heard me, uh, at which time we will we'll put it on, on the agenda for us. Uh, Unless there's other comments from council, we'll move on to, uh, I, I just see, yeah. by the way, I just see a million dollars. I, I just see $1 million. I don't see anything else. So uh, I will, I, will move to, I can't get past that part. So I will just move it, uh, move it on to uh, Mr. Manager and then allow, allow folks to speak to, uh, to number nine. Um, council member Collins and, and law could speak a lot more eloquently about this project, yeah. but we're getting to the point where we're, we're looking at getting your approval to bid the project. And this line item is just trying to describe how this project is. As, as the council's aware of, due to a lot of your hard work and, and talking to as many people as possible, including state senators and people at Alcasan, uh, this project has received grant funding. That's important to note because it's, these are the largest grants that I'm aware of that Churchill Borough has received for, uh, for any kind of infrastructure project. So that's a accommodation for the council and for Ralph and for Gateway Engineers who worked really hard on this. So uh, we're kind of ready to advertise and that's great news. And this is a big project. And what it does is it takes what now is a pump station, which if you understand, ideally you'd like sewer, sanitary sewers to go by gravity and not to have mechanical pumps moving or lifting the, the sanitary sewage. And this is what this project will do. It will bypass and eliminate the need for a pump, which has expenses for electricity and operation and maintenance and use a gravity system to flow into the Penn Hills 
sanitary sewer system. It's an expensive project, but very necessary. I, I can't remember the exact number of homes and feet. Some of those details were in there, but Dennis, you might want to chime in, but uh, Col Mr. Collins, Mrs. Law, you guys are the ones who have done so much heavy lifting on this. If you have and, anything to say as well. Before before we turn it to, to Diane and, and Kevin to speak, and, I, and you're right, they, they have done all the heavy lifting in this space. Um, I would just stop and thank our state senator, uh, Jay Costa, for you know really pushing to make sure that we had the, the grant funding that kept this from being something that, that really buckled the knees of our budget uh, here in Churchill. Uh, we've worked at, at length with him and he has produced for us substantial funds um, to make sure that this doesn't come out of, out of our pockets. Um, so that being said, if there's any comments that the, the, the people who put in the heavy work in this space, uh, Vice President Law, Mr. Collins, if you'd like to speak on this issue. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, I believe we're well on our way with some of the documents we've received over the week. Uh, the permitting, Dennis, is, is going along very well. Uh, we've, we've seen no problems. I know we had the snake study and stuff like that. So we are on on timeline to finish this by the end of the year. I, I, I keep talking about that, but are we still there, Dennis, as to permitting and a shovel in the ground by, by summertime? Yes, actually, we've received, uh, we, we've received both permits that were submitted uh, for the part two permit uh, for sewage, as well as for our stream crossings and wetland crossings that we have for this project. So both of those permits have been received and approved. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, we are right on schedule, uh, planning to have this bid out in the next month and then would plan to have it ready for award at the June meeting um, and ready, ready to break ground this summer. Terrific. Uh, I'm sorry, Kevin, go ahead. No, okay. Kevin, do you have anything else you want to I would comment just, on? I would be remiss if I didn't uh, jump in to mention the person who doesn't seem to be here this evening, and that is our infrastructure manager, uh, Ralph. Uh, I knew Ralph uh, going down into that pump station pit in the middle of the night, in the middle of a thunderstorm, jumping the, the shorted out wires that kept the pump going. I mean, when you talk about, you know, valiant service, uh, I, more than anything else, hearing what I've heard tonight that we're actually going through and Dennis, we actually got permits. Um, it is all to the credit of Ralph uh, that we are, that we got to this point. If we had not, uh, the cost to this borough would have been absolutely astronomical. So I am deeply grateful for all of Kevin's work, for Dennis's excellent work, and, you know, God bless Ralph. That's all I need to say. Uh, just one last comment. Go, go ahead, Kevin. I, I agree. That's all. Uh, yes. I, I uh, have one more comment to make from a budgetary standpoint, if I could. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the estimated cost is approximately a million. And if you're able to do some quick math, you'll saw that the, the, the GROW grant from, El, uh, from Elkasan that the state senator helped us get and uh, the, the Commonwealth Finance Authority grant was, was more than that. But there's a tap fee, just like every resident or commercial business, Penn Hills is, will charge Churchill a tap fee, which would be the equivalent of all the dwelling units or the equivalent dwelling units that are tapping into the system. Uh, they have agreed, I think, Dennis and Krista, to let us pay that over 10 years, but it is a significant fee, like $600,000. or It's a big fee because obviously they're accommodating our new flows when they have invested in a system to do that. And that's why they're able to do the tap fee, but they are letting us do it over a longer period of time. Dennis, I think, or Krista, that might be the right, might, right amount in the right time. Yes, approximately six hundred thousand dollars over uh, over ten years span. That's correct. Yeah, and just so particularly for for newer council members, so so that you understand the kind of elation that you may see between particularly Kevin, Diane, myself, possibly. Uh, you know, the, so so you recognize, um, you know, the, the pump station uh, and to the residents as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the 500 poop jokes that I have for poop, you know, flows downhill kind of thing. Uh, and we were, we were forced into uphill kind of space. Um, 
but recognize it that our infrastructure, our facilities manager, Ralph, was, was keeping this together with duct tape. And if, if this thing goes, um, you know, if this isn't simply, oh, there's something that's down, you know, that, that sewage is going somewhere. Uh, and it's, it's not going to be a pretty sight for all of us in Churchill. Uh, so this is, I know for Diane and Kevin in particular, has meant sleepless nights in trying to figure out, you know, how will we get through this? Um, so to finally get to the point where the funding is in place, the bids are ready to go, um, takes a lot of pressure off, off of us as a borough um, and ensures that our residents uh, get, get the kind of quality service without disaster uh, that we hope to have. Uh, so, and, I'm, and I can't tell any more poop jokes after this. So that will be the end of that. So I appreciate it, unless there's any other comments. Thank you, that, that is great news on, on multiple fronts. Uh, and that will move us on to uh, the American Rescue Plan conversation. So, so where are we at with our with our, our funding space there? So we have one more thing before we get to that. Um, Mr. What am I missing here? And that is item number 10, and it relates uh, to okay. uh, capital improvement planning policy. And, and Kevin, I don't know if you wanna to speak to this or uh, no, I just so you, all, all the council members have it in their in their package. Take a good look at. It. I think this is a great first step. Basically, what it is, it's a capital improvement plan that we look at projects over the next five years. We prioritize them, and rather than just doing things on a short term basis, we're planning out financially and infrastructure wise where we need to be: roads, sewage, uh, projects that we all like or want to have, we'll put it in front of this capital improvement plan and get it in sequence as to when we're gonna go after it. And we'll have a good idea of how we're gonna finance it and whether we're gonna need financing or where we're gonna need future grants. I think it's, it's a great first step that, uh, and I, I really appreciate Adam's and, and Valerie's input on starting this. So take a good look at it. Uh, the big thing is we're gonna, Do we, do we just have Kevin freeze up on us? Yeah. yeah, so one of the things he was gonna say um, is that we'd, we'd have a new committee. And what we anticipate is uh, somebody from the infrastructure, somebody from finance and someone from the governance policy committee just kind of put their stamp on it to recognize the flow of those entities. Obviously, all of council will be involved in project development and project thinking of funding, but the, that last committee is important um, and that's part of the resolution as you'll look at next week. So as Kevin was saying earlier, please take your time. It's in your packet to look at it. Um, we're really excited about this because this really then sets everything in motion for how we put together the 2022 budget. I, I, I feel for Kevin and that he said the most important thing is. <laughs> I think I want to make one of the comments that was we talked about at our our meeting was being able to plan ahead and seeing if grants are available. Let's say we know that something's coming up, like, okay, well, do we need to move this to the budget? Let's look at our budget and our plan and see if we're able to fit that within the grant. So I think that's one of the most important things that we talked about during this. And, you know, just to follow that, if, if you're able to provide that information, if we're able to have that information up front, um, accessing the grants just from a financial space of, of understanding uh, is so much more about having the time to sit with the people who control the grants than it is even the application itself. Um, and I think we've seen that in the past. So if we're able to, to have early kind of notice on that, it gives the ability to kind of develop the relationship that's necessary uh, so that we can, we can actually move those fu that funding forward. So I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Just as kind of a side note. Uh, Unless there's anything else in that space, then we can move to the, uh, the American Rescue Plan and I'll turn it back to you, uh, Alex. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's before you. The information is we're anticipating over the next month or two to, re to possibly in June, you know, get a letter that has the 50% of the amount that we anticipate possibly coming to the borough, which could possibly about, be about two hundred eighty-nine dollars or $290,000. Um, what we're excited about as it relates to our community is that there are eligible uses that are specified in the legislation, including replacing lost revenue and costs associated directly with meeting the pandemic needs. But, but more importantly, for our community right now, in light of the discussion we've just had for the last 25 or more minutes, 
our water and sewer and broadband infrastructure investments. So, you know, getting our plan kind of together over the next couple months and, and then this revenue coming towards the community uh, in, in that time frame, And then we have till 2024 to spend the entire amount. The next uh, allocation, the second 50% of the amount would come in next year around the same time, June of 2022 is when we anticipate that amount. So the timing is really right. We're really excited about teeing up a capital improvements plan and being able to, to, to make the most of this money and not have to rely you know, on, on a further future near-term increase in our, in our sanitary and, and, and real estate taxes. Outstanding, any, any comments from council? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I mentioned this with to Alex and I agree completely. I mean, I think we had to cut some things this year and we would anticipate having to roll back some other things if we keep going with the, the revenue that we're getting under current circumstances. Using this money to not only take care of capital projects and infrastructure, which also employs people, you know, so I, I'm very much in favor of, of uh, seeing this money used that way. Yeah, I, I may add that some of those, that, that alternate projects that we talked about earlier may fall under this, uh, this money, this financing, so. Uh, unless there's is there any other comments from council? Uh, I would add one other point then, um, Yes, to, to Kevin, your point that that was part of it, right? That we have the you know there are some of these alternate projects that can be used to this in kind of a catch-up space. Um, additionally, um, I would point out that I've reached out uh, and we'll set something up with the government relations committee with Cong with Congressman Doyle. Please recognize that there is a second bill on the floor, right? Uh, in the infrastructure bill, and this bill will be in a, in a space where unlike. Uh, the American Rescue Plan that kind of had this equal kind of distribution across the board with a formula in terms of how the distribution had taken place. Um, this bill will will have some space in it, I believe, for for the uh, the the squeaky wheel, if you will. Uh, and so it is our you know our intention as a borough to to be the squeaky wheel, uh, to to find the time that the Government Relations Committee can meet with uh, the congressman. Uh, and to discuss kind of the needs of the borough in relation to the, uh, the new uh, bill that will come out. And hopefully from that, we can address some of both the bigger development issues that we've talked about um, and some of the needs, uh, along with some of the, the smaller kind of shovel-ready projects that we probably can put on the ground. Uh, shovel-ready always being the key in these kind of conversations. Um, when you're looking at the current or the new bill, and I generally don't talk giant national politics, except it has very specific Churchill uh, implications. Uh, when you're talking about these kind of infrastructure bills that they put out, uh, they're generally couching this as both an infrastructure slash jobs bill. When you hear a jobs bill, it means that the projects that they want, you need to be able to put people to work. Uh, we saw that before and the 2008, uh, and this will probably be similar. And so we need to think about, uh, Kevin, you, to your previous point, what are the program, what are the jobs that we need done in the next year? You know, what are the things that we can put shovels on the ground and put people to work on um, and bring that to the congressman and saying, hey, when you put this together, here's what we think Churchill needs. Uh, that, that's the way that, that we argue for every penny that we can bring to Churchill. Uh, so just a kind of a secondary note. Um, unless there's anything else, uh, I will move to any additional updates, comments that, that council or staff want to bring for discussion. I'm looking around, pretty pretty quiet in that space. Mm -hmm. um, that being the case, uh, we are going to uh, head into a brief executive session and then we will adjourn immediately following the executive session. Uh, the executive session uh, is of a, a legal nature, uh, is, my, is my understanding. Litigation uh, specifically, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, a litigation you. matter, and, and let me uh, make a recommendation, I think. If you want to just go ahead and adjourn uh, the regular meeting now, we can just move, move into executive session after that. So I will be, I will finish kindly and saying that's why we have such a wonderful solicitor uh, that, that I'm so proud to have and have, have had the opportunity to, to interview and watch him grow into the, to the great 
legal, uh, public legal mind that, that he offers. Uh, okay. That having been the case. I have one uh, more thing, Mr. President, just to yes. uh, please. I'm, I apologize. I should have said it earlier. The planning okay. commission is meeting on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. They will be getting a presentation by Hillwood related to the Westinghouse redevelopment. However, it's not anticipated that they will be able to act um, because we still are getting through the submission of March 17th, 2021. And it may be possibly uh, May or June even that the commission, the planning commission is able to do their part of their reviews. Following that, the council will hold their meetings and do their reviews. So I just wanna make sure the public who's on now knows that Wednesday, same time, 7 p.m., same Zoom link, and they can participate. Thank you. Same Zoom channel. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, Oh, sorry, Jay. Alex, just, just for further clarification, I mean, that reason is because our engineers and our uh, team are still reviewing those submissions that we got, right? <laughs> Not only that, but to be honest with you, there's still some things I think they'll comment back about things we want to see further refinements on. So it's an iterative process okay. of back and forth, talking and getting through. It's a very complex, as we've noted, project. We're also waiting for uh, remarks from the DOT, Pennsylvania DOT and DEP. They would have to submit their comments as well. Is that right, Alex? Yes, can you speak to when you think the timeline is? Because you're a little better handle on their submission in that track that's going towards highway improvements or projects? Uh, yeah, with that, um, we would expect anything through the uh, PennDOT. Um, typically their approval process is at, at the very least 30 days or their review process from submittal. So we would not see another comment. Um, we have been reviewing with them any of our traffic reviews and we do plan on having our reviews um, submitted uh, uh, tomorrow or prior to the meeting just so that we do have uh, our next level of review. But at this point, it does seem like there will be uh, additional additional levels of back and forth and resubmission and review. Um, there are certain items like through the DEP that that will be reviewed um, or to be approved contingent. Um, but we have discussed that the uh, Department of Transportation review, uh, specifically of the traffic study, would be part of the overall conditional use application because that was a specific study as required by the conditional use application. Any comments, people? All right, all right, um, and, and a key key addition, Alex. So I appreciate you pointing it out because it's not something we don't want. It's certainly something we want the public to know. So uh, thank you for that. Um, at this time, unless there's anything else, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn, knowing that uh, council will be staying on for an executive session. So moved. Thank you, Matt. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Valerie. Game set match. Uh, thank you all for coming out for uh, for our kind of spring meeting. Uh, we're going to throw you all off and uh, we get stuck here for a little bit longer. <laughs>